All right, so we're back. And this time we're going to talk about tracing images using the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, I guess one of the major things you have to realize is whether you're tracing a sketch or whether you're tracing a photographic image, the process is essentially identical. Now, there, there are ways you can go about it uh, that may vary differently uh, uh, depending upon which artist it is that you're following in their technique. For me specifically, I like to create my ink layer or my trace layer for my sketches on top of the actual pencil layer or the image that I'm using. Now this is a ghostwriter image I did uh, for another course and actually if you look into my courses you'll see there's an a there's a how to create character art or comic art in Adobe Illustrator course and I explained to you the process of getting to a final rendered artwork in Adobe Illustrator using certain techniques. What I'm going to explain to you now coincides with one of the pieces of that course and that's the inking process for me. So you take your image and you're going to place your image in Adobe Illustrator. If you're on this part of the course, I'm pretty sure you already understand how to place an image into the actual document itself, so I'm not going to cover that. And once it's on your layer, uh, what I like to do is, there, there are two ways you can do it. You can actually double click on your layer and not the layer name. And you can click and make it a template layer. And if you do that, it'll dim your images to a certain percentage. Okay, and that allows you to see the lines that you're creating over it. Okay, so if I were to click OK, you're going to notice that the image in the background that I place will dim 50%. But I typically don't do it that way. I like to keep that from being a template layer. So what I do is I will click the side appearance button and I will go to my transparency options. If that's not up, you go to window and you go down to transparency or Command Shift or Control Shift F10 depending on whether you're on Windows or Mac and then I would change the transparency the opacity down to maybe 40 percent and then I lock the layer okay now I go to my second layer or create a new layer that's on top of that and this is where I'll be working so you grab your pen tool and you make sure you put a stroke color of black and then you pick a starting point now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the point at the very bottom just to start so we're gonna start in the bottom right and I like to zoom in so I can be closer and get an accurate representation of the line work that I'm doing because you'll notice once you get closer you can actually see smaller items and the way the line itself actually changes and alters but when you're farther away, you can't see all those details. So you may skip some things and it may not be as detailed as you're going along. And you can tell that usually by the number of anchor points that you're using. More anchor points usually indicates more detail. It also indicates uh, more difficulty when manipulating the area or convenience depending upon what type of image. Like if I wanted to manipulate this area, uh, I would have to do more work simply because there are more anchor points. Whereas this area, if I want to manipulate the shape, there are less anchor points. It's easier for me to manipulate the shape that's in between because it's a bigger distance in between. But again, that goes to speak on what type of area you're actually representing. Is it a simple area or is it an area with a lot of detail? So for areas with a lot of detail, it is actually better for more anchor points. But if it's a bigger shape or a bigger area, quite often it's best to use less anchor points easier manipulation, less complication later on down the line. So let's go back. And we are going to start at the bottom. Now we're here. We bring this all the way around. And you notice I clicked and I pulled. That's going to allow me to curve my next line, which will then curve into my next line. It allows me to keep curving these lines so there's fluidity in my line work. You'll notice that it travels along almost in a snaking path. 
Now, see, I overshot this line, so I had to use the space bar. If you have watched the previous lesson, I used the space bar to readjust that point without letting it go first. Then I can let it go and continue from there. If I were to overshoot again, I can always come back down. I can let it go with the space bar button, but keep the click held down so I can continue to manipulate the handles that are on that anchor point and continue to work through my piece. Now you'll notice that I'm actually moving the artboard as I'm doing this. And the way you do that is using the pan tool, which you don't have to switch out the tool you're already using. You simply click the space button while you're using it, but before you've clicked, and you can move it around the artboard. Now if you click and hit the space button, that's what's going to allow you to move that anchor point. But if you hit the space button before you click, you can move the artboard without breaking your pen tool, which means you can continue to manipulate your lines. So we're going to go along this, and I'm not going to ink the entire thing. I'm just going to give you an example of what it's like once you get to a certain point. What I will do is I'll actually open the completed file, and we'll take a look at that using the pen tool later. But as you can see, I'm going around these points, and all of these are pretty much curved, except for this point where I just specifically made a point and then angled it off because it was a sharp turn just like I would do here if you notice this part of the jacket goes straight up and then curves outward now we can either do it by clicking a point here and then pulling outward or we can click a point here hold our alt key and direction it outward and click another point and then we can hold the alt key and have it angle upward so that way our line curves in that direction. It's very simple. What I suggest you do is to get an image that you've either created or one you see on the internet and um, trace around that. Get yourself accustomed to using the tool. Now, right here, it comes out to this point at the top of the collar. I have to go back in the opposite direction. I can do one of two things. I can hold down the Alt key, which changes it to the Convert Anchor Point tool, and I can go in the opposite direction and continue my line, or I can just click it, and you'll notice the Convert Anchor Point tool comes up there, and if I click it, it makes it a point, and then I can go in the opposite direction with my line. I tend to like to click and then go in the opposite direction as opposed to switching the handles. I don't usually do that for sharp turns. I will switch the handle only when I have a slightly off turn that I'm making. And like I said, you'll see as you go through it and as you do it more and more, it just becomes second hand and you can get through it faster. Now you can do this with a mouse, you can do it with a touchpad, you can do it with a tablet. A tablet is way faster than any of the other options. If you do it with a mouse, it, it's possible and you can do it. It to me personally is tedious and annoying because it takes longer. Uh, I either prefer a trackpad or touchpad and or a tablet tablet above all things but again these are the ways that you can trace your image now if we go back out and we look we'll notice that this pretty much follows the exact line of the image I mean once we turn off our background layer or our layer that we're using to trace we'll see that this is what it looks like without. It's not very attractive, but we'll get into how you can manipulate that in the uh, next tutorial. So take some time, take an image, trace around it, get used to the anchor points and the handles and how they bend and work. Use the tools from the previous lesson from using the space bar to move your anchor point while you're using it, the old key to actually change the direction of the handle 
and or the shift key to keep things aligned straight at various angles. Okay, and moving forward in our next section, we're going to talk about manipulating stroke width after using the pen tool.